Hello everyone, how are we all doing? I hope you're all doing very well. Welcome back to my channel and to another three meal video. These are gonna be some absolutely delicious, delicious recipes we've got coming your way. We've got two pasta dishes and an awesome vegetarian shepherd's pie. So if you're in the mood for some comfort food, some really easy recipes that you can make at home for yourself, for your loved ones and family, then stick around. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Click subscribe down below if you haven't already. Let me know in the comments what your favorite meal is. And we're gonna get into it. So today is meal number one, which is gonna be a roasted tomato and leek mac and cheese with a gorgeous Parmesan breadcrumb crust. It's one of my favorite comfort foods to have when it's a little bit cold outside. Here's the ingredients you're gonna need. So the full list of ingredients is gonna be left down below, but you're gonna need some balsamic vinegar, one white onion or a shallot, two leeks, some panko breadcrumbs, some pasta, we're using this like spiralini, I think it's called, I got this from Tesco, some Dijon mustard, one garlic clove, some butter, plain flour, an assortment of cherry tomatoes. We're also gonna need some clotted cream, some cheddar cheese, and some vegetarian parmesan. Let's go. Okay, so to start off, you wanna slice your leeks in half and then give them a quick wash under the tap and then slice them up into thin strips. Um, don't worry, you haven't gotta to be too fancy about this because it's all gonna sweat down. And then you wanna half your onion, top and tail it, and then dice it up. I do it like this just because I find it so much easier if you just slice it up into lengthways and then dice it up as well. It just makes it dead easy to chop. So turning your attention to the hob, you wanna pop some hot water into a pan um, and then you wanna sweat down your leeks and onion in a bit of butter. Um, do this on a reasonably low heat just so they get nice and soft. You don't want them to like burn or caramelize too much. Now you can add into your water your pasta. I'm using spirulina as I said, but you can use penne or macaroni or whatever you'd prefer. And then grate in your garlic and add in your plain flour. So this forms the base of your roux, like your nice cheese sauce. So just cook out the flour for around a minute. Then add one teaspoon of Dijon mustard, stir all that through. And then you can add in your milk. You can of course use a plant-based milk if you prefer. We just use semi-skimmed here, but you can use oat or almond or whatever you'd prefer. And just add it in gradually, stirring after every addition so you get a nice, gorgeously creamy, smooth pasta sauce. So this is like your cheese roux. And then it's time to add your cheese. So we're grating in the cheddar and we're also adding in some Parmesan. Of course, you can use whichever cheese you prefer. Um, you can use vegan cheese if you wanna make this completely vegan. Um, like I said, we're using vegetarian Parmesan and uh, cheddar cheese. It's like a real nice mature cheddar so we get that real cheese flavor. So to stir all that through your bechamel roux sauce and then that is good to go to season. So I added some pepper. I didn't add any salt because um, I'm gonna add some pasta water and also Parmesan's quite salty. I added in one table spoon of clotted cream this just makes it so creamy and oozy as you can see now it's time to add in your cherry tomatoes i add them in now just because i like them to have a bit of a bite while they roast so just add that into your creamy cheesy sauce and just stir all that together so once all that is stirred through, you can now add in your pasta. So that's perfect. Um, I cook it a little bit under recommended um, packet instructions just because it continues to bake in the oven. I also added in a little splash of pasta water as well just to loosen the sauce. This really helps because when it bakes, some of the sauce solidifies. You want it to be nice and creamy as it is right now. So you can just pour that directly into a roasting tin or if you, the dish you've made it in is actually oven proof, by all means cook it in that. Um, I just did it in this so it's a little bit more shallow and it goes nice and crispy. So you want to top it with cheddar cheese and loads of parmesan and then also some panko breadcrumbs and just sprinkle all that over nice and evenly bake it in a 200 degree oven for around 20 to 25 minutes until the top goes golden brown and it's nice and crispy and then just serve that up with some side salad on the side a little dash of balsamic vinegar and that is your super easy roasted tomato and leek mac and cheese Okay, so it's day two of the meals and this is an absolute classic. It's dead easy. It's one of the most delicious recipes. Classic Italian is spinach and tomato cannelloni and we're gonna have a garlic bread and salad on the side. So let me show you what you need. So ingredients you're gonna need for this, of course you can do um, pre-made cannelloni as in the shells, but we're gonna use fresh lasagna sheets. I picked these up in Tesco. We need some passata, which has got a little bit of basil in it as well. Some nutmeg, some chili flakes, some cheddar cheese, vegetarian Parmesan, some garlic, some ricotta, and some spinach. And of course, garlic bread and salad as the side. Okay, so to start off, you want to top and till your garlic, use the back of the nitrous to crush it, and then just finely slice that up, like dice it up, and um, it doesn't need to be too finely chopped, don't worry about that. 
and then in a frying pan add a good drizzle of extra virgin olive oil and then add in your garlic and cook that over a medium low heat it's best to keep the heat low when it comes to garlic otherwise it can burn and burnt garlic is just not a nice taste and um, so just add that on your olive oil and just sizzle that away and then you want to add in some dry sweet smoked chili flakes and um, go easy on the chili if you're not really good with spice but i love a bit of heat so we added in some chili flakes and then in the meantime you can just wash your spinach if it hasn't already been washed and then you can add that directly into your pan with the chili and garlic and you want to wilt this down it does look like a lot but it kind of with spinach it just wilts down to nothingness so add more than you think you might need obviously if you're feeding more people then you can do it across two pans if you prefer so just wilt that down over a medium heat in the meantime add some of the tomato and basil passata into a baking dish we use quite a big one but you can use a smaller one if you have that Turn your attention back to the spinach filling. You want to um, season it, so using salt and pepper and just stir all that together. As you can see, the spinach is starting to wilt, which is a dream. Then you can add in a whole tub of mascarpone. Again, you can use ricotta if you prefer. I just really want it to be nice and creamy, so I added in a whole tub of mascarpone, which is just amazing, and just stirred that through the spinach, chili, and the garlic. And then I grated in some fresh nutmeg. Nutmeg and cheese and spinach is just a match made in heaven. It's such a classic pairing. And just blip that away on like a medium low heat until the sauce starts to thicken and everything just looks super super creamy don't rush it at this stage you don't want it to boil you just want it to be nice and simmering and then you can add in your parmesan again you can use granite padano parmigiano reggiano vegetarian cheese vegan cheese whatever you prefer stir all that through until it's looking beautifully creamy like this taste it for seasoning it did need a little bit of salt so i added in some salt and this is kind of like what your filling should look like you can add some corn flour if you really want it to be nice and thick but this was perfect for for us so then grab any lasagna sheets again if you're using tubed cannelloni you can just fill it like that but we're using fresh pasta so just fill the each of the lasagna sheets and then kind of like roll it up don't worry if someone goes on your hand it's absolutely fine and just pop it directly into the bacon dish that's got the posada in there and just repeat i grabbed zara as well to help out just to speed things along because we made quite a few as you can see so just keep on repeating that process until you're pretty much filled your bacon dish and use the majority of your spinach mix and then i just use the rest of like the sauce just to put on top of the pasta and then i finished it off with the passata on top as well so that's kind of like the base of your cannelloni and then i just grated some extra vegetarian parmesan on top this just gives it the most gorgeous golden color and just really helps it crisp up in the oven i went heavy with the parmesan because that is a classic classic cannelloni pop that in the oven at around 180 degrees i bake this for around 20 minutes i think um and you can just check it if it's catching too much but the, you kind of want the top to be golden and the pasta to be cooked and this is the finished product it, it was honestly one of the most delicious delicious cannellonis i've ever had it's beautifully seasoned so creamy and very very tasty okay so it's the third and final meal of the midweek meals and tonight we're going to be making a red lentil and root veg shepherd's pie i kind of call it like an allotment pie because it's loads of root veg really comfort and topped with cheesy creamy mashed potato it's delicious let me show you the ingredients okay so for the red lentil root veg pie you're going to need some red lentils and some root veg so we've got carrots and swede here of course you can put parsnips in if you would prefer as well you need some tomato puree a red onion a can of chopped tomatoes you also need some rosemary enough for the pie and also the topping some vegetable stock we need 800 ml in total so i'm going to get a little bit more going in a second and then for the mash we just need some mature cheddar cheese and some potatoes and also olive oil and salt and pepper but that's just a standard all right let's get into it okay so to start off you want to half your red onion and then just do the same technique as i mentioned at the start of the video so slice it lengthways and then widthways and then just dice that up so that's perfect and then you just want to repeat that with the other onion then turn your attention to the carrots you want to top and tail them and then just peel them to get rid of the skin give them a quick wash and then half it down the middle and then cut them into like length batons and then dice them up don't worry about getting the carrots too small you kind of just want them to be evenly cubed like this and then in a um, heat proof dish add in your onion and also your carrot with some olive oil and just soften that down in a pan again over like a medium low heat you don't want to rush it you just want things to be nice and slow in the pan nothing crazy while that's nice and softening away in the pan you want to peel your swede um, again you can use turnip parsnips whatever root veg you prefer so just using a speed peeler i just peeled away the skin give it a quick wash and then sliced it into like i'd say half a centimeter centimeter chunks and then just cube that up again doesn't you don't have to be too pedantic about it guys just to make sure it's nice and even and then i grabbed the rosemary stalks i used two pieces of rosemary i kept one for the top and then used one to add into the root veg so i just finally sliced that up with my knife 
and then added that into the pan. And then I just stirred all that together. Again, just keeping the heat fairly low so nothing burns. And then I added in the swede and just stirred all that through. And then I added in one tablespoon of tomato puree. Tomato puree is quite concentrated, so you wanna make sure that's fully cooked out before you add in the next ingredient. So just stir all that through, and then you wanna make sure it's all coated in like the tomato and garlic mixture before you add your can of chopped tomatoes and also your veg stock, and just stir all that together. So this is like the base of your allotment shepherd's pie. Once your liquids are in, you can add in your red lentils. I used half a cup of red lentils, and that was perfect. Be careful when you're using red lentils because they have a tendency to fall to the bottom of the pan so just make sure your pan is on nice and low and you're stirring it constantly. Now you can peel your potatoes, you can use whatever potatoes you prefer, you can do a mix of regular and sweet potatoes if you want to make it a little bit more healthy. Just cook those in a pan with a little bit of salted water for around 10 minutes until they're nice and soft and then it's time to assemble. So I made quite a few individual pies just to freeze a couple and also have some for dinner. So I just decanted some into a bacon ramekin and then I mashed the potatoes with butter and milk just to make them nice and silky and smooth. Of course you can use regular um, dairy free butter or alternative of milks if you want to make this vegan just mash all that together don't worry it hasn't got to be too smooth i quite like a couple of lumps in my mash on top of the pie so just mash that through if you have a potato riser by all means use that and just top that with some gorgeous mature cheddar cheese again you can use vegan cheese if you prefer and just continue mashing that until it's beautifully creamy now I just spooned the mashed potato on top of the pie filling. Again, you can be as generous or as scrimpy as you prefer. I quite like a lot of mashed potatoes, so I topped it with that. And then I just used some of the leftover rosemary sprigs to just spike into the top. And then you just want to pop that into an oven for around 25 minutes to 200 degrees until the top goes nice and golden brown and the base is beautifully hot. And just serve it up into bowls. Um, of course, you can do some green beans if you prefer or some broccoli on the side. It's really good just as it is and that's exactly how we had it. So that is your easy red lentil and swede allotment pie. So that's it guys, I really hope you've enjoyed these three super tasty, super easy vegetarian midweek meals. If you have, as always, if you could give it a thumbs up and don't forget to click subscribe, there's plenty more coming soon. Thank you so much for watching.